What's cracking guys and welcome to my voiceover to my leg day. I got lots of questions. What about your training routine? How do you train? So here is it guys. I hope you enjoy it. I do a upper lower split currently now almost a year before that I was training push pull legs that's when I started training that's how I made my first gains but now I really like the upper body lower body split so that means on one day you train your upper body and on the other day you train your lower body and this one is the voiceover with the lower body so the leg day and I start to mobilize my hips so I like to kick out my legs in both direction like I did and then straight from the left to the right and don't overdo it guys don't rip your leg out just make it nice open and loose don't especially at the beginning don't don't tear anything apart or anything just make it open up and that you get a good feeling and feel comfortable in the squat position and at the beginning of the leg day when you warm up check in with your body because you're not a machine you're feeling different all the time every day so check in how am I feeling today what's my energy level am I very loose am I very stiff and then sometime, sometimes my warm-up takes only three four minutes sometimes it takes 20 minutes it depends how stiff or how loose I am when I start with squats I always start with squats I want to be very loose in the hips and very flexible that I feel super comfortable in the squat position so then I always make a downward facing dog a yoga position stretch out my foot my entire leg and open up my hip that will open up my entire side and then I make a big uh, big I don't know step forward and really work on my hip to open it up and I don't stretch static before I train I stay I stretch dynamic and I would recommend this to you also that you always stretch dynamic before you training and not um, not static because dynamic stretching you're you're warming up you're increasing your blood flow and make everything open and ready but when you stretch um, static you're opening up that you can stretch even further but then it's like loosey-goosey and it may um, may make your may decrease your strength a bit all right so I open up my hips back to downward facing dog what is really good for your hamstrings and then do a cobra like this really nice to open up the lower back and then just walk to your feet make your back open up your hamstrings that's another stretch I really like they make it dynamic I go into the squat position with my hand under my feet so I'm stretching now my glute and my hamstrings and now I'm stretching into the squat position and um, yeah put pressure on my on my arm so I have something where I can push against and it feels really good and I'm not always doing the same warm-up routine before every upper or lower body training I switch it up depending on which parts are stiff and which parts need most uh, attention so I have a big variety of exercises and poses stretches whatever you want to name it mobility work what I can do and I just do yeah, as I said, where I feel stiff and mostly it's my hip. I really like to open up my hip, hip that allows me to squat deeper and really feel comfortable in the lowest position of the squat. So that's another stretch, dynamic stretch I'm doing right now. I really like for opening up the hip. Well, first I yeah, make my spine loose. Very good. If you deadlift or squat. So now like a pissing dog. <laughs> sorry I don't know how to describe it better you just rotate your leg and basically rotate your hip both ways I do five five repetition and at the end I just hold it and then stretch it out the end 
and really make it open up and then come back to my opposite elbow do the same on the other side yeah I'm in the Go Gym in Chiang Mai Thailand really like the atmosphere in the gym and that it's basically outside you see on the, on the sides it's open just a fence with a roof so you have an outside feeling and sunshine coming in so yeah I really like the the atmosphere never wanted to leave at the end I always chill there at the calisthenics park and do an insta pose and stretch around talk to fellow vegans because so many vegans go there anyways I do 10 controlled air squats before I start squatting I always do this that I feel okay how does it how does it feel okay because soon I have 100 kilo on my back okay so I do it very controlled full range of motion you yeah, you yeah. and then at the end I really like to sink into the squat oh not yet now I think yeah sinking in and just feel comfortable and if you can't go so deep yet don't worry one one to two years ago I couldn't even do a squat couldn't come under parallel but your body just adapts what you're doing so do the squat every day spend try to spend five better ten minutes every day in the squat and your body will adapt you get deeper and deeper and you're getting there it's just consistency and here this stretch I also very really like for deadlifting but I want to open up the hips you see just rotate from the left to the right anyways as I said squat every day do something productive in it or just listen to a song just um, listen to one song while you're squatting, doing an insta pause while you're squatting, reading while you're squatting, just spend 5 to 10 minutes in the squat. Alright, it's going down a pyramid set of squats. Pyramid set, so we start light, high rep and go heavy, low rep. It starts off with 10 reps, 60 kilograms. Really like the pyramid so far. Just started with a pyramid in my Thailand trip. A friend showed it to me and really enjoyed it because you have to know now I'm um, on vacation I don't follow my strict schedule I mix it up but with the same training principle I always have and that's start off with squats then deadlifts but yeah you will see I will show you in the end which exercise I always do and then I just have different routines with sets and weight so some one day is heavy one day is moderate and one day is easy because you can't always train heavy because your tensions and your joints they need to catch up with the muscle growth and it takes them longer so if you're always training heavy then you're really damaging your joints and your fiber and everything so you have to train also light and more in higher reps for hydrophy and um, you can't always train heavy that's what I learned all early on and that's also you don't always want to train heavy because to build muscle growth, to build volume, you need to be in a hyper, uh, hydrophy, hydrophy, I think that's the word, area, and that is between 8 to 12 reps. All right, I did now 8, to t 8 reps, 80 kilos, sorry, and now I'm doing 100 kilo for 6 reps. So 10 reps, 8 reps, 6 reps, always increase the weight, oh, sorry, my English, <laughs> always increase the weight by 20 kilograms. And you just, you just adjust it to your strengths, you know. Just add 5 kilos or anything and go lower with the reps and higher with the weight. That's what a pyramid is if you like doing this. I love doing a pyramid because you have both the light and the heavy weight and both the high and the low reps, so everything in it. And you start off with light weight, high reps, so you feel very warm. And then you're getting heavier and heavier. And everyone, I think, likes to train heavy and doing low reps. And yeah, you're getting there. You can even do a one rep max at the end. So now I'm doing four reps, 110 kilograms. And yeah, my squat form is pretty proper. Tended a powerlifting workshop um, a couple weeks ago and really learned there uh, some more tweaks. So now I think it's yeah pretty much on the point. One thing, my head overextends a bit. Yeah, but I noticed, but this is not so bad. So... The main parts are nice, no butt wing, good back, good tension everywhere, being straight. Now two reps for 120 kilo. It really feels 
felt heavy after all that squatting, but form still, still, all right, still very, very good. If you want that I do a, a um, tutorial of these exercises where I really go into it, then write it down. Okay, now I went up the pyramid. I didn't went down the pyramid. I went down the pyramid with pin squats. Three reps, I failed at one. You see, pin squat is when you have here the squat rack and then you stop and lose the tension and then build up this tension at the lowest point because you have to analyze your squat. Where are you the weak, weakest? I'm the weakest at the lowest position. If I get out the lowest position, I, I can complete the squat. So I like to do pin squats because I'm learning, building up the tension in the lowest position here. Lose my tension and building it back up. Oh, I see <laughs> this rep, I couldn't do it. Maybe I could, I could do it, but it uh, you have to analyze your body and your training. It would just destroy it. Oh, this guy wanted to help me. <laughs> I said, no, I want to get up, get up my, myself. And what I wanted to say, you have to see the sacrifices. To get this rep up, it would destroy my, my um, nervous system. And then I would be just, oh, and couldn't do so much progression work later on. So I just failed at the rep and did the rest of the sets with a better nervous system, if that makes any sense. All right, I did three reps for 100 kilo, three pin squat sets. Yeah, I really like the pin squats because, as I said, the lowest position is my weakest position. Four reps with 90 kilo, going down, pin, lose the tension, and build back up and being straight. Going down, lose the tension, and build it back up strong. Yeah, really feel these pin squats. Lose the tension. And I'm very low at the pin squats. You can also set the bars if you have a proper rack squat higher, and then you don't have to go so so far down. Then at the end, I just did five pause squats with nine kilo. It also helps at the lowest position because you pause down there, you can't use any momentum. You have to come up when you're still at the bottom so this time you keep the tension but you don't have any momentum or anything so it also works the lowest region very well so i'm a big fan of pause squats and pin squats but back to the basic do normal squats that's the most important thing but it's nice to switch it up to make if you're plateauing then it's nice to do some kind of these you have to analyze yourself again where am I lacking, at which position, and then work on this. Alright, sorry for all the English mis mistakes, I'm just going on, you know, it's one cut, I don't cut anything out, so please forgive me. Alright, now I'm doing deadlifts, I did three, um, three sets with eight reps, 120 kilograms. Normally I do more, I'm stronger in deadlifts, but these plates, you see, they're curved, so they're so bad for deadlifts. Because if you're coming back down to the floor, they would just move to the steady and that's just, yeah, they move to the other direction. So that's why I, I keep the tension. I don't, normally I go to the floor and build it back up the, the tension, but I keep the tension. So it's much more exhausting if you do it like this. So I had to use less weight, but it's also very good because you keep the tension the entire time. It's neither better or uh, right or wrong, but it's just a different different style. But I like to 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 drop the weight, not dropping it, but bringing it back down to the floor, building the tension up, and then do it again. Because if you don't, you often likely do bounce a little bit, and if you bounce, you don't make proper progression because you bounce more and more and you think you get stronger but you actually don't you're just bouncing more and if you bounce then you get a shock on your vertebra and that's not good for it because you bounce a little bit and then you you're stuck in there and probably don't have tension then it's not good for your for your vertebra or your spine i mean yeah but these deadlifts looking proper really like deadlifts and squats that's the main parts that's the most important things heavy compound movements. Progress at these, start always with them. Then I did heavier weight, well it's not so heavy, 140 kilo, but now you will see with the with the curved plates. I go up and then when I go down, you see the blade, whoop, it just shifted away, so 
that was not optimal. You see it just shifts. But that's what I mean, that I'm building back the tension up. I go down, lose the tension, and building it back up. So you make proper progression and can track honestly without momentum. Deadlifts. I always do three sets. That's enough. Then um, leg press. Three rounds. Three repeat. Not re uh, three. Oh, I'm sorry. Three. Oh, what's the word? Man, why am I so dumb right now? Three sets. I'm so sorry. Because I start. I always start with my with squats. So squats is mainly for the quads. And so the front of the legs, then I do something for the back of the legs, deadlifts, it's for the, mostly for the hamstrings, the glutes, the ass and the lower back. And then I go back to the fronts, as you see, as you saw with the leg press. And now I'm going back to the back side, to the hamstrings and the ass with um, the, oh, what is this machine called? Glutem race, but I won't give any tips on this one because it's the first time I did it because I never had this machine before. I love it. I feel it very good. One tip I can give you is that your ass and your shoulders have to be in alignment because if you're bringing down your back, then you're doing a hyperextension and you're training your lower back. But if you keep it straight with tension, then you're only using your, your hamstrings and that's the target muscle I want to target here. But yeah, I'm just learning this exercise, so not giving any tips so far. So I did now for the quads, for the backside, for the quads, for the backside, two exercises. Now I'm going to the calves, and the calves, the key is train it heavy. You see I do only 4 to 8 reps, that's my rep range. And the squeeze is important. The lower squeeze, you really um, stretch your ankles, and then the upper, upper squeeze is so important. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze for 5 seconds, because the calves, you use them every day. You, go, you walk, you do a thousand of, of reps, you could say, but to give them a, a tension, you have to go for the upper and the lower portion and really stretch it out. That's how you set the tension to grow. If you go not only the normal rep range, but go at the top, hold it, at the bottom, hold it. Five seconds at the top, five at the bottom. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And heavy, don't do 50 reps, do, do eight reps, do five reps. Very heavy because the light weight, they have it all day, all day long when you walk. And at the end, I just do five sets for my abs. I like to keep it functional and especially when you're hanging, you're training your deep and your lower abs and then I like to do also some crunches for the upper abs, so I have everything, but yeah, I like toes to bars or just leg raises and just anything. Alright, yeah, that's the last exercise. So my training, my lower body training or my leg day consists of six exercises. Squats, deadlifts, something for the quads again, like I do leg press or Bulgarian split squats or lunges, whatever you like. Then something for the backside again, for the hamstrings, like leg curls or gluteum raise. Then I do calves and abs. That's it, these six exercises. Here then I'm doing toes to bars. Here they're not proper because at the end of the leg day, Often I'm just so done, so I just kick myself up there. All right, and that was my leg training. I'm so sorry for my bad English. It was just horrible this time. It's usually better, and it's a lot better when I edit it. So when I re-say the sentence, but yeah, that would just take forever at the voiceover. So I apologize. My English is getting better and better. So I hope you like it. I hope you learned something out of it. Alright guys, that's it. I hope you liked it. Thumbs up and comment if you have any question. Peace out. <laughs>